Welcome to Cure Aquatics and Exotics. My name's Susie, and today I'm going to be packing up these fish. So come along with me, Susie Q. Hey. Okay, now that I know that the weather is good on my end, the weather is good on his end, he's going to be home. I have not fed these fish for two days. I did not want their bellies filled with food. We put a little bit of water in there. Their water, I won't be used to it. My net. Guess it'd be better if I was all prepared before I started, huh? Now I know why people who sell fish don't have any decorations. We gonna trim back these plants. Get rid of all that. Okay. So now I got one side that is plant free. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have to have seven. I have to have an odd number. Sorry, Bob. I know you said you wanted six, but something weird about me says it needs to be an odd number. Okay. Seven. We got some floating plants I got to replant. Stem plants I'm replanting. They're not floating plants. They're floating now. Let's go take a look. I want to talk a little bit about these beautiful polar blue parrotfish, a parrot cichlids, because there is a parrotfish out there, saltwater parrotfish. That is not what this is. This is a freshwater hybrid which means this is not a fish that you would find in the wild, but it's been in the hobby for probably over 20 years. It's between breeding a convict cichlid and a parrot cichlid. Or is it a blood parrot fish and a convict? So these guys are gorgeous and very easy to breed. So my friend had a little small colony of them and she got hundreds of fry, hundreds of fry, and asked me if I wanted some. So she brought over a whole bag full of fry. It was probably about 40. 40 fry, and so that's where, that's where I got these guys. They're pretty good natured, unless they're breeding. So they're going, they can live up to six to eight years. They also get about three and a half inches. They can be. These guys here are only a half inch still. You know, they might be small, but they can hold their own. So if they're picked on, they'll pick back, but they usually don't pick on other fish. At least from what I've been told, I keep mine in a species only tank because I just think against the heavily planted tank, these blue and white beauties with the reddish, orangish colors on their bodies, they're just gorgeous. They're just gorgeous, I love them. And they got tons of personality. Let me tell you, when I come down in that fish room, they're front and center on the glass. And it's got that really cute uh, puckered face, big round puckered face, short round body. And because it's a short round body, you, you wanna stay away from live foods and foods that are harder to digest. I stick to Omega-1, uh, Northfin, Extreme, Let's see what else we got, um, New Life Spectrum, Hikari, foods like that. And I don't know how easy they are to find, and I don't know how easy they are to find because these were given to me. So I'm passing them along to some fellow fish keepers, so maybe they can breed them and pass them along as well. They're very hardy. I keep them right around in a tropical temperature, right around 75, 78, somewhere in there. My pH is at 6.8 to 7.0, so that's what they've been used to. But I'm pretty sure, because they're very hardy, that they can, over time, get used to whatever your tap water is. I think they're gorgeous. I know they're a hybrid, and some people don't like hybrids, but I think they're pretty cute fish. Obviously not one I would had gone out and bought, but now that I've been introduced to them, I really like them. I'm going to keep my colony going and see if I can keep breeding them. Uh, some good tank mates for them. Zevrums, the angelfish, some quarry cats. I have mine in a 29 gallon. I wouldn't keep 
these in anything smaller than a 29 gallon. Obviously when they're fried, that's different. I mean, I have grow out tanks that are 20 gallon longs and things like that, but I'm talking about their forever home. 30 gallon or 29 gallon is probably the smallest I would go, but definitely bigger is better. These are the fish that are going in the bag. Two are real tiny. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here we go. Put a little bit of a java fern in there. Let's see if this fits in there. I have to pack it up. So I'm going to double bag it, but my second bag is way too big, but I don't have much choice. I need another rubber band. I'm going to do one more bag for big bag. All seven fish is now going into our insulated box. Now I have to put in the ice pack but I don't want it to be on the fish. Let's get this upstairs. Can you get me the ice special ice pack out of the fridge, please? We're gonna make sure that it fits in here, but first thing we're gonna do is wrap it in deli paper. Because I don't want it to like, so-called burn the bag. I just want it to be cool. Ice pack is going in in case it gets too hot. This is going on and we're gonna tape it down. So now, the fish and the ice pack are in the box. I'm gonna put it in here, and I'm gonna get an envelope to add some stickers. I'm gonna write a note to Bob, but it's left-handed, so I'm just gonna do a happy face. So then we'll put some stickers, some cards, in here and Bob knows that I have a broken wrist and why everything is sloppy and why there's no personal note in here because it would just look like a kindergartner wrote it. So now that this is all in here we are going to zip up this box. Now I'm going to add my signature tape which is Susie Q. Now to write on here live fish, right? I gotta write live fish. Do I write it on every side? Let's get this thing to the post office. Okay, we're going to the post office. Okay, we're in the car. So Bob, I hope you enjoy these cichlids as much as I do. And if you want to see Bob unboxing these, go ahead and click on this link up here. He's going to be unboxing these, and I can't wait to see how this is my first time shipping. And as my first time shipping, I learned so much. I think it's a lot easier to ship if you ship often, or if you ship, if you plan to keep shipping, so that you can have everything you need on hand. I did not have everything I needed right on hand. I didn't have a place for it. Like I would keep boxes, styrofoam, bags, rubber bands, nets. I would have special tanks that, that don't have decorations in them. I would have ice packs, paper bags, or deli wrap all ready to roll if I was going to be shipping. But this is my first time, so I learned that also to make sure you know the weather. So I learned quite a lot, and I can't wait to see how they arrived. So thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Na, na, hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. So come along with me. Said I'm Susie Q.